ladies and gentlemen, the playing of our national anthem. And now they'll be raising the state flag.
And now finally, the department flag. The significance of the department flag taking the senior members of the fire department, passing that flag down to the, to the youngest, it was members of the fire department. And the significance of that is they're representing the future of this station. And ladies and gentlemen, if we could bow our heads for our invocation prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessing of the hands that built this facility, for the men and women that occupy it, and for the community that supports it. You are our strength and protection. We ask that you bless this station and all who serve here with the strength and skill to go in your name to help those who are in danger. Make this a place of strong family ties for all who serve here. Bind us together with cords of duty, friendship, and dedication. We ask that this new station be assigned to everyone that you are at work through us for this community. That this station be a place of preparation, which will give the people of Mars, and Adams Township, Valencia, and all our neighbors a sense of confidence and security. And finally, we ask that you protect the firefighters, the department, in this wonderful new station. In Christ's name, amen.
And now we'll be moving on to the ribbon hose cutting ceremony. As there's a strong significance uh, behind this, past Valencia Chief Bill Rooker and past Mars Chief Gary McCormick will be coupling the hoses together. And by doing this, the Adams Area Fire District will symbolically represent the merger of Mars and Valencia Volunteer Fire Companies threaded together forever under one roof. They're cutting right now. <laughs> and now we're going to have the ribbon cutting ceremony. You already cut it. <laughs> Russ, you are fast. <laughs> well, then I can officially say that the Adams Area Fire District at 645 Route 228 is officially open. <laughs> so our, the next thing that will be happening, we'll be driving the um, engine into the station actually pushing the engine into the station by course of tradition. Back in the 19th century, the engines were horse-drawn, and they would spray the horse's feet, cleaning the feet and the engine before they would back it into the station for the first time. And in the ceremony, the same thing will happen here, where water will be sprayed on the engine, the tires, and it will be pushed in the station for the very first time. Well, once again, we're so honored and it's such a privilege uh, to be here today. We certainly would like to welcome all the dignitaries that are here today that have uh, come from a lot of distances to uh, share in this moment. We're so honored that they're here and we're going to hear from, uh, from some here in just a few moments. This is a, actually kind of a personal thing for me. I, uh, as I mentioned, April 1st, 2007, was uh, when Adams Area Fire District was formed, and uh, two days later, they had their first call, and it was my house. So uh, when they said, uh, our dear friend Nan McCormick came up, and she said, uh, hey, could you, could you MC this for us? And, and what am I going to say? No, you put my house out, the fire out of the house. Uh, but they were at our home in eight and a half minutes. It certainly says a lot, and they've done that over and over and over again. They were actually training inside of the old fire station. And that was significant because when you're at the fire station, you can go to wherever you're going very quickly. And as you see here, for those that toured last week or those that may tour this afternoon after we have some lunch, uh, you will see very quickly that this is a place meant for, for them to be here, for families, really. And you will see that, and that's very important. So, uh, and my fire was not a grease fire in a pan. It was one that was, uh, flames were shooting up 40 feet. In fact, if you were anywhere along 228, uh, by the high school, 
you could see a giant orange ball in the sky. That was my house. My wife made the 911 call eight and a half minutes later. They were there, like bees that just worked inside of that home. And uh, they saved our home. They just did. And they did that again and again and again for a lot of people, I suspect, that are inside of this room and a lot of people who are not here right now. They've done that on the road. They've done that so many times. So for me, this is personal. And I certainly appreciate being here and having the opportunity uh, to, to MC this here uh, this afternoon. We're going to have a lot of things, a lot of elements going on here. But first, uh, some of the speakers, and the very first one will be our chief, Bill Hayes, on behalf of the Adams Fire District. Come on up, Bill. Thank you. Can you hear me? Well, good afternoon. I'm Chief Bill Hayes, and it's my absolute honor to welcome each and every one of you to our grand opening building dedication. Thank you for being here and being part of Adams Area Fire District's biggest day. I'm humbled to be the chief of the men and women of this great organization. And thanks to the Adams Township, the Adams Area Fire District will be even better and stronger. Today marks the end of one era, the construction phase. And we're going to be beginning a new era. And today we're going to capture that in a time capsule. Ironically, we chose an SCBA cylinder. The time capsule will have today's Butler Eagle, or, well, since it's Butler, we'll have Sunday's Butler Eagle. We'll have a Trib, and we'll have the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. A uh, letter to the future chief for myself, a fire department roster, and my wife is around here somewhere, oh, right in front of me, thanks. And she's taking pictures today. We're going to download them onto a thumb drive, and it'll all go into the time capsule, which will be displayed in our display cabinet, thanks to Brian Perry. I know he's here as well, and uh, it'll be here for everybody to see. So mark your calendars, May 13th, 2042. How ironic is that? You're all invited back here to come see us open the time capsule. According to figures from 2014, there are a little more than 1.1 million firefighters in America. Of those, approximately 800,000 are volunteer. In Pennsylvania, 96% of firefighters are volunteer. And according to the Pennsylvania Legislative Budget and Finance Committee, Pennsylvania volunteer firefighters save state and local governments approximately $6 billion every year. But the ranks of volunteers are dwindling. What once was an iconic part of American life is losing its allure, in part because of the work or the time involved. Some would say the calling is lost. Others just say it's not as fun as it used to be. Regardless of the reason, in 1976, there were 300,000 volunteer firefighters in Pennsylvania. Today, our numbers have dipped below 50,000. There's an old adage in the fire service, 200 years of tradition unimpeded by progress. We as volunteer firefighters know the fire service is rich in tradition, and we love and we honor it. Today, you witnessed us honoring our history. We raised our nation's flag to fly proudly over our new home. We had our juniors and our newer members raise our department flag as they are the future. We had the past chiefs thread a hose together as part of our ribbon cutting ceremony, symbolically taking the merger of the Mars Volunteer Fire Company and Valencia Volunteer Fire Company and coupled them under one roof. We sprayed off the wheels, the manure, before we pushed the pumper, the horse, into her new home. We're proud to pay homage to our rich history, but we as the Adams Area Fire District refuse to accept the status quo. We are a department of forward thinkers, also and always seeking out new trainings, new technology, new methods to keep our firefighters and our community safe. We embrace change, and this building is proof of this attitude. This building is incredible and will allow us as the Adams Area Fire District to grow, change, and make us even better 
more efficient to serve our communities. I want to thank the men and women of the Adams Area Fire District. The countless hours and sacrifices that each of you provide is mind-boggling. And I and every resident in our community have a lot to be proud of. Without you, this is nothing more than a building. But with all of you, it is our home. A home in which we will change ourselves, well, we will challenge ourselves well into the future to provide the best services we can to our communities. In speaking of service to community, I want to recognize and applaud two families, the Hager and the McCormick families. Would Nan and Gary and anybody from the Hager family and the McCormick family please come forward? Chief Bud Hager started his fire service when he was in high school and was an active firefighter for nearly 40 years until he retired and moved south. Of those 40 years, 20 of them he served as chief. His son Jim started as a junior firefighter as well, and he too served until he retired. Chief Hager's daughter Nan, Mrs. McCormick, started as a young lady with the junior of the ladies auxiliary. And many of you know, Nan still serves today, and she functions as our secretary. Then comes Gary. Gary came into this family when he married Nan. Gary himself had already started his fire service career with the Harmony Volunteer Fire Company, and he joined the Mars Volunteer Fire Company in 1974. Gary served as chief for 18 years and still actively serving today. On behalf of the Adams Area Fire District, we would like to present your families with a small token of our appreciation. Please accept this flag for nearly 200 years of combined service between your families. This flag is the last flag to fly over the Mars station, and we retired it this morning. Thank you. It wasn't a matter of if Mrs. McCormick, Nan, was going to cry. It was a matter of when. <laughs> to the township engineer, Ron Olson, and to the architect, David Hill, I believe you gentlemen have earned your wings into heaven with this project. It's not easy to sit down with some firemen, especially this group, and be able to capture what we had in our hearts and mind. But somehow, you guys managed to do it, and this building is awesome. I have one quick story about the building and some of the meetings that we had. Firefighter Bob Lytle, where is he? He unfortunately had the task of picking out the bricks for this building. And he was all alone because we were all busy, so the schedule says. But he was on his own to go out and pick the brick samples for this building. And he did, and he did well. But David Till wife, she looked at the, 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 the brick samples that he chose, and she said that these samples looked like they were still glowing hot. They were right out of the kiln. And it was decided then that they were the perfect for the building, providing a historical but an exciting look. So thank you, gentlemen. Where is Ron Olson and uh, David Hill? I see Ron. Next, I want to thank FLIR Contracting. Mr. and Mrs. FLIR, Denny, all of your employees and subcontractors and anyone who worked in this building. From excavation to the final touches, you guys have built us an incredible home. So thank you. <laughs> Last but certainly not least, I want to thank Adams Township and the Board of Supervisors. Thank you. Two simple words, but words can't describe our gratitude for making our dreams come true, and better than we ever dreamt of, that I might add. 
The only way in which we can truly show our gratitude is to continue to serve our communities. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Each year we take an oath, and if you would allow me to read a portion to you, could I ask all the members of the Adams Area Fire District to stand up? This is a portion of the oath that we take. Becoming a firefighter is a noble calling to a profession that exemplifies the ideal of service before self. One of our most basic principles is the responsibility to protect life and property. As a firefighter, we must be free and of clear understanding for the oath which we are about to declare. We will have an obligation and duty to act. Such actions may result in risking your life to save the life of another. We have a responsibility to learn the craft of this great profession. Such schooling is constant and without hesitation to tenure or complacency. We will be expected and with age understand the incredible honor of remembering our fallen, our history, traditions, and those that have come before us are the foundation for which we stand. As a civil servant, we no longer represent only those that carry our last name. We must embrace and uphold many core values, integrity, respect, and excellence, to name a few. The public trust can never be broken. Adams Township Supervisors, as the chief, along with the members of the Adams Area Fire District, this is our promise to you. We will always be here to serve, protect, and train. We will do everything we can to uphold our professionalism, traditions, history, and maintain our reputation. We will not break the public trust. Could I ask Supervisor Russ Ford to please come up here? For all the things that you've done for putting this together and for working with us and making this come true, thanks for everything. Just a little note to get it, Ross. You'll notice that it's just a red shield. There's no way we're going to give him a white shield. <laughs> All right, thank you, Bill. Bill was one of the ones that fought the fire in my home. Gary McCormick did over there and many others that were, that were here. So appreciative. You know, there's so many stories of, of uh, people so often talking about uh, this department and what's going to be happening here in the next... 5, 10, 20 years is amazing. Director Jim Ellis now on behalf of the Adams Area Fire District. Would you come on up? Thank you. Um, as the committee chairman, I just uh, first would like to say a big thank you to all those that were on the committee. Uh, everybody had an assignment, so to say, and they all carried it out, as you can see, 100%. Um, it was uh, excellent teamwork done by all, each, each person taking their thing, trust between us all, uh, individuals going out and bringing it back, and everything just went off without a hitch. Uh, I'd like to especially thank uh, Bob Lytle uh, for getting up at 2 a.m. every morning so that he could be available for the 2 p.m. meetings. All right, thank you, Bob. All right. Uh, the value of this building to the community I don't think that, uh, that you can overemphasize that. Uh, this building for the district uh, is just another piece of, our, of the puzzle, as the chief talked about. As a community, the knowledge that can be learned in a library, the security of knowing that you have a dedicated police department, the reliability of roads department and services that are, that are taken care of, and the fun and relaxation that is enjoyed at parks and recreation. The fire department is just another one of those pieces of the puzzle. Those all coming together um, are what gives value to a community. Civic duty is alive and well. What the chief talked about, the numbers perhaps uh, lowering, um, civic duty is still alive and well. Gary McCormick has a passion for the fire service. As a young lad, Gary was the first chief that I worked under, and, uh, and I learned a lot, his passion for teaching. 
At 57 years old, I was teaching a state fire, uh, state fire class of burn down in South Point. And at 50, I wasn't 57, Gary was 57. But uh, Gary came down to take the class because it was one of the very first that I got an opportunity to be a lead instructor. And he was pushing young guys down a hot, hot dark hallway, and we had a good time. Bill Hayes has a passion for the fire service. As kids, we grew up together. He's probably the only person I know that sewed a pair of socks to his coveralls so that he could get out the door faster to get to the fire station. <laughs> um, we enjoyed a lot of good times. This is fitting to have all the, what you will see, all the living area that's up there. As Bill and I used to grab our sleeping bags and go to the meeting room of the Mars station just so we could stay overnight at the station right on the, on the hardwood floor of the, the meeting room. So it's way different, Bill. Um, and then for the future, I see guys like Sean Sokolowski, a young kid that has an ambition to move forward with this fire department as well as a career in fire department. And I see that a lot in myself. So three generations that I see, and there's many of the firefighters in our organization, but just to outline a few, just to show you that civic duty is alive and well in this community. A special thanks to the leadership of the Adams Area Fire District for allowing me the opportunity to come up with a concept uh, for this fire station and to work again, as Bill said, with David Hill and Ron Olson on that initial concept. What do I like most about the new building? That's something that's asked to a lot of us. For me, it's it might not be the flashiest thing, but it's the opportunity to do the training that we have here in the mezzanine. So we can continue to pass things forward to the young firefighters. Lastly, just to be a little bit selfish, my wife's not here because she was having my kids at two soccer games and two hockey games while I'm here. But uh, for 20 years, I've been drawing fire stations and leaving them throughout the house. And... Uh, I think she's pretty happy that I won't have to do that anymore. So I appreciate it. I hope everybody uh, loves a fire station. And again, thank you to all of you. Thank you so much, Jim. Now on behalf of the Adams Area Fire District, President Jason Seffrey. Good afternoon and welcome to the Adams Area Fire District headquarters and I'm proud to say that it's come a long way from a couple years ago as a dream and a thought uh, to have what we have today. So today I just have a couple of thanks that I would like to thank a couple of people. Obviously the first one, the township supervisors. Without the township supervisors we would not be in the situation that we are. They're sitting down in this front table here, and we very much appreciate what you did for us. A little story back, I joined the department back in 2002. A couple years later, um, they were talking about a merger of our department with the Valencia department. The township put together an oversight board, and to me, I, I didn't know what any of this was. I didn't understand it. Why are we merging? Uh, but I went to a couple of these meetings, and this guy, Russ Ford, kept coming up, and he's like the leader of the group. And I'm like, who is this guy? Well, you know, we kind of thought that once this all passed, we wouldn't really see Russ as much. But the Oversight Board did a lot of work, proved that this was a good concept for us. After the two merged, Russ stayed on board with us and was a great ally for us. He was uh, on our board of directors for a couple years after we merged until we became a township supervisor. In 2013, uh, we had a building committee together and we were starting to make drawings up to do an addition on our original building. Um, from the get-go, from the first time that we merged, we said we needed to get an actual headquarters, a place that suited us, not just a garage that held our trucks. We actually had drawings to do an addition, and during one of our meetings, Mr. Ford came up and asked us just to stop. He said, how would you like 
if the township would help us get to where we need to be. I'll be honest with you. If we would have went through our original plan, we would have been regretting it in 10 years. Uh, we met at a couple meetings with the township supervisors, and they said, we want to build you a building for 100 years. We need to build you a building that will outfit us for 100 years. So we came together, and this is the building that we came with. So again, I want to thank the township supervisors, if we could all applause them now, because if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be here today. If it wasn't for our building committee, this wouldn't be here. I want to thank Jim Ellis for taking the lead on this. Um, you can almost guarantee that if there's a big committee coming around, he may not start as the leader at that time, but we all kind of fall into place in his advisement. You can't get that anywhere else. So thank you, Jim. Um, on that committee was myself, Chief Hayes, Jim Ellis, Bob Lytle, Taylor Capuzzi, and at the very beginning until, until technology took over and everything was email, we had Gary Logger, who was a life member. Um, our emails were going crazy, and it was so hard to get Gary in on everything that was going on. So I want to thank the building committee. Um, without them, we wouldn't have this design. On that topic of this design, when the architects came in, they laid a, a, uh, a dot design out on the table, and they were like, what do you think of this? I can tell you it looks nothing like what you're sitting in right now. We looked at it for probably 10 minutes, and Jim Ellis brought out a piece of cardboard that he drew a building on. The building that he laid on the table is the building that you're sitting in now. Uh, we never did see, and I couldn't tell you what that other building looked like because we didn't see it long enough to know. Uh, Jim had a great design from the beginning and followed through all the way to the end. So thank you again, Jim, and the building committee. As far as the fire company goes, the fire company has some vendors that helped us. Uh, we had the Delaney brothers, and they're here with us now, if you guys could stand up. The furnishings throughout the building, the desks, the beds, uh, all of the fur furnishing came from them. They were great to work with, uh, very knowledgeable on what is good, what is not good, and what we should use. So we want to thank you. One of our uh, photographers here, Tiffany Crittenden, she's my neighbor, and I drug her into helping us one night, and um, immediately everybody in the group felt that she was a good fit for us. Um, so we did have Tiffany make all the programs. Uh, she made the invitations. She took pictures. So I'm not sure where Tiffany's at. Tiffany, I want to thank Tiffany for uh, helping us, and... And now that she's done such a well job, um, I'm sure Russ is going to be calling her for other township projects because she does very good. Thank you. I want to thank Brian Perry. I'm not sure where he went. Um, he had to, okay, he had to leave. Out in our four-year area is going to be like a kind of our museum. Um, about six weeks ago, I met with him here and uh, told him what we wanted out there for a display cabinet. And within six weeks, he made exactly what we would like. So thank you, Brian. And then the last person I need to thank is actually my family. This has eaten up a lot of time to design this building. And so many times my phone went off, my wife's like, let me guess, you're at the fire station. And I was. I was here. Um, my kids have been here since... Uh, day one with me, so I want to thank them for um, dealing with me being here all the time. So thank you, and thanks to all the members that helped. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Now on behalf of Butler County, Commissioner Kim Geyer.
Greetings on behalf of the Butler County Commissioners, um, myself, Leslie Oshi, who is here in attendance with us today, and also Kevin Boozle. We want to thank you all for inviting us to share in this special day and occasion here in Adams Township. Where would our county and community be without our volunteer firemen and women who courageously and selfishly and literally put their lives on the line each and every time they answer a call to put out a fire at a home, a business, a long route 228, at a car accident, a chemical spill, not only here in Adams Township, mind you, but throughout neighboring municipalities and communities. We can never, nor should ever, underestimate the value of the services they provide our county and communities in providing for the public's safety. For far too long, we have lived in a society that has taken for granted these generations of men and women and local families who support and serve our fire companies in the communities in which we live and work. As a young girl growing up in the borough of Mars on Cherry Street, just down the road from Jimmy Ellis, who was just a toddler when I was a young girl uh, playing in a neighborhood. I recall the curfew as being a signal that my friends and I would put down our bats and balls and return home after a day of playing in St. Killian's parking lot. As kids, we would often stop in our tracks when the fire whistle blew any, at any point in time of the day and we would recognize someone's house was burning somewhere, and that the firemen would soon congregate to the fire hall, jump on the truck, and rush to a burning house or building. Some of us would even stop as we were taught and close our little eyes and say a prayer, because somebody was in trouble, someone needed help somewhere. I was raised in a generation, as you can tell, in which we were taught to respect our fire departments, who were considered one big family. They were an integral part of our town, of many families, and we were taught to do whatever we could to support them through fundraisers, baking food for bake sales, and attending events so that they could continue to maintain and buy costly tools and equipment and outfit each other with uniforms, and protective gear to help them in a fire, to help them keep themselves safe while they were working to keep us safe. Some of our society may have forgotten these values or never been taught in the first place by their parents or grandparents. Today, we stand in a new and beautiful state-of-the-art facility that, rep that represents decades of community cooperation and collaboration here in the Southern Butler County region. This beautiful red-roofed facility stands as a new symbol of priority and for the new things to come here in Adams Township Fire and all things public safety. And each of us will be reminded of that each and every time we drive past its central location here along 228. Again, like any church, let us be reminded that it's not the actual building and aesthetics that make it the church, but rather the people who live and work inside and to those who support the organization. Likewise, it is and will be the people of this community and this region who make this fire station what it is today and what it will become into the future but they need the community's support. And we have a municipal, county, and state obligation to not only direct financial resources to our fire departments, but also a moral obligation. These investments are and will continue to be made to sustain our fire departments and public safety responders into the future. Today's dedication of this wonderful facility will enable our community and Butler County to have a sense of renewed purpose as we rally together to support the men and women of this fire department 
as we should all fire departments throughout the county. There's a great opportunity for this department from this point on to engage and involve others throughout the county in collaborative efforts and through professional development opportunities and training opportunities with a facility such as this. We know efforts are already underway to accomplish those very goals, such as the example with the new formation of the Standard Action for Emergency Response Group, as just one new example of what can be accomplished when we work together as a community and as fellow fire departments. The county commissioners would like to publicly thank all the people involved in the planning and building of this facility. It is now up to the county and the community at large to sustain it and support the people who tirelessly work to keep us all safe. We want to thank all the people who helped to plan today's event, and we want to thank you for including us in on such a special occasion. May God continue to bless us all in this community and help keep us safe in a community and county we care about. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kim. And now on behalf of the state of Pennsylvania, we welcome Senator Scott Hutchinson. Thank you, and thank you for allowing me to take a few moments to uh, revel in this wonderful achievement uh, that we are sitting in today. Um, folks, you should be very proud of yourselves. Uh, this, this building, this, uh, as, as the commissioner said, the red roof that you can see from a very far distance, I, I think that's a symbol of something that's, that's very important. It's a symbol of cooperation. It's a symbol of commitment. And it's a symbol of the future. It, it took some very visionary folks to come together and make this dream a reality. And I want to thank each and every one of those folks who rolled up their sleeves, put aside their differences, and dream big. Those big dreams are the way that we can build a community that sustains many, many years into the future. And obviously, these local communities are those kinds of people. So congratulations on that. I also want to take a moment to thank the men and women who, day in and day out, make our communities a better place to live, work, and raise our families. The volunteer firemen and firewomen. It takes a special breed of person to set aside their own safety and respond to a call, no matter what the weather is, no matter what their situation is in their household at that moment, but to rush to the aid of somebody else, maybe even somebody they have no clue who they are, somebody involved in an in a auto accident, for example, but they know that somebody is in need and they are going to fill that need. But in addition to that, our volunteers, through countless hours of training and work here at the fire hall, it, it takes a huge portion of their lives. And so we are also, and I am personally thanking each and every one of you for that commitment too, that that's really makes what, what, what's called a volunteer position a, a full-time job, it really is. So thank you to the visionaries. Thank you for those who've served this community for so many years in, in keeping us safer. But thank you to those who will serve in the future under this beautiful red roof, becoming trained, and then responding and making our community a very special place. Congratulations and God bless you all. Thank you so much, Senator. Now on behalf of FLIR Contracting, Dennis FLIR. Hi, 
As you can tell, I'm, I'm not actually Dennis Fleer. <laughs> My name is Brandy Kennedy, and I am speaking to you today on behalf of the general prime contractor, Fleer Contracting. I'd like to take a moment to introduce our team. First, our man on the ground, our site superintendent and my brother, Denny Fleer. <laughs> Next, the woman with all the answers, our office manager and my mother, Ramona Fleer. <laughs> and last but not least, the wizard behind the curtain, our president and my father, Dennis Fleer. We would like to thank the Adams Township Supervisors and Olson Craft and Associates for giving us the chance to be involved in such a landmark project. It's not often that we have the opportunity to work with such passionate owners, but on this particular project, we were fortunate enough to see the dedication and care firsthand from so many of you. We would especially like to thank Supervisor Russ Ford and Ron Olson for all their hands-on work during this project. Our sincerest gratitude is also extended to our crews, all of our suppliers, subcontractors, and their families for the many hours of intense work and sacrifice made in order to bring this building to completion. But today is not just about these walls. Today is about the men and women who will make this building the fire headquarters which will serve this community. These individuals selflessly put their lives in jeopardy to protect their fellow members of Adams Township and its neighbors. Day after day, they take up their equipment and answer the calls of the distressed while running into danger, and not because they have to, but because they want to and because they can. These select individuals possess the bravery of which legends are told. So, without further ado, we would like to present this gift to the firefighters of the Adams Area Fire Department as a symbol of their bravery and as gratification for allowing us to be part of the next chapter in your story. This piece was handcrafted for you by an incredible artist, Jeremy Fleer. For those who were, for those who are, and for those who will be, I give you the valor within. Thank you for your time, and it is with great pride that I say on behalf of Fleer Contracting, Firefighters, welcome home. Thank you so much. This might be a little out of order, but Linda, did you want to come up? You know what? Come on up, please. Linda Lee's Township Supervisor, come on up. I don't usually do this. But this is a very special time in all of our lives. We have a design building to, I can't even put the words to it. It's just amazing. And we know that this building will help many people. And um, I learned today what I, been wanting to do for a long time. I rode the big truck. <laughs> My God, I turned around and the thing was still behind me. It was amazing. But I also learned how to blow the horn and the siren. And I'm just so glad and thankful that, that like I was born in Adams Township, I've, I've been a supervisor in Adams for about 28 years, and I worked at Mars uh, Bank for 47. And I've seen a lot of changes in our township, and I just was happy to be a very s small part of them. Thank you very much, and enjoy your building. Thank you, Linda. And make no mistake, Linda, for many years, swinging a bat as the township supervisor for this community, and as well as Donnie and Ed, and so many people have navigated 
uh, tremendously the waters of this uh, township as it has blown up and expanded so much, especially in the last 15, 20 years. It's just truly amazing, and, and we're certainly honored as residents of Adams Township to see the work that you guys have done. And uh, now finally, one of those uh, supervisors on behalf of Adams Township, Mr. Russ Ford. Thank you, Jim. Good afternoon. I'm not really sure at this point whether I'm ready to cry or laugh. It has been a long ride, and it's a great day to be a resident of Adams Township, Seven Fields, Valencia, Marsboro, and Callery. I did prepare some comments. I promise most of you know from meetings. When I start talking, I keep going, and today I decided I'm not going to do that. After almost a decade of planning, negotiating, designing, and construction, the day is finally here to say hello to the new Adams Area District new home. There's so many people that have been involved, and it would be wrong for me not to point them out. I first of all would like to start with my fellow supervisors, Tom Francesino, please stand. Mr. Don Aiken. Ms. Lin Mrs. Linda Lees. Mr. Ed Vogel, who's not here today. Uh, we've had a little bit of a rough week with a lot going on in the township, but we all, we all four, five of us, stand so strong and so proud today. Uh, I can say that I thank each and every one of them. They left this project in my hands. They supported this project. Every decision that needed to be made, every time we had to negotiate or talk something out, they were always there for me. So thank you. Uh, there's been a lot of thank yous, but um, I had the fortunate time to work with Mr. Ron Olson. Unfortunately, Ron, you won't be hearing from me three times a day, but thank you so much. Uh, when you, work, you spend so much time with somebody and a couple of people, Ron and David Hill, uh, you really find out a lot about them. And David Hill, who each and every one of you that dealt with David, knows that it takes him a little bit of time to get through what he wants to do as an engineer. But we decided we thought maybe he could actually, he and his wife could make it on Dancing with the Stars from the installation dinner as he danced the night away. So David cannot be here with us tonight. Um, I, want to, I want to change gears a little bit, and I want to talk about what I've learned over the past year about the employees of Adams Township. Uh, I could not be more proud, as I know the other four could say, that talking about banding together, you know, um, I got a, the chance to, to, to work a lot with the, uh, the Adams Area Fire District, but I also had a lot of opportunities to work with not only this, but our employees that are in Adams Township. It's easy to come to work each and every day and say, I got a job. It's easy to say, I get a paycheck and leave. I truly don't believe that our people do that. Uh, our leader, who might not be here right now because I have him on another duty, um, I'd like to thank John Hawk, and I would also like to thank his whole crew, who along this whole time, at any given time of need, anything that needed to be done in an emergency or if they were here for the open house last week, or if they were here to help us today, I'd like to thank our director, John Hawk, uh, and I would also like to recognize all of our fellow people who are in the back. So I'd like to give them a round of applause. Thank you. Uh, Denny, Denny, Denny Flieger and I were talking the one day, and I stopped by, and I'm like, Denny, we have an event here tomorrow. This place is a mess. And he goes, he goes I know, Russ. He said, but I don't know how we're going to get it cleaned up. And I said, I do. John Hawk to the rescue. I called John. He and his crew were down here and had this place cleaned in three hours. So thank you to all them. Um, I'd also like to recognize our police force. I'd first of all like to start with Sean Inglom, our chief, who is here today. Bob Scanlon, our assistant chief. As you may have known or may not have known, we had some burglaries throughout the past year here at the site. For some reason, I guess copper and tools are important and people want them. So after the first time it happened, we had a, we had, um, a robbery. 
Sean and I got together and we talked and we said, hmm, let's put up some trail cameras and let's not tell anybody. So we got hit again. And everybody, we got a phone call about 6.30 in the morning from Mr. Denny Faligo said we got hit again. Uh, Sean brought his crew up here. Within 24 hours, we found the thief in Beaver Falls. And I can be glad to say right now, thanks to the Adams Township Police, he is now in the Beaver County Jail. Thank you, Sean. I would also like to say, uh, we, we had a committee put together for these programs. Uh, I can tell you they were spirited. They were fun. Uh, one really good story was our first, our first meeting. And I said, we're going to have a parade. They, they looked at me like, are you crazy? I said, yep, we're going to have a parade. And we're going right up 228. And they said, not a chance. You will never get 228 closed. Ladies and gentlemen, I've lived here for 52 years. I took a ton of pictures. I have never seen 228 closed, but today it was closed for a parade. Thank you, Sean. I said, I said to Sean, Sean, he says, I'll get it done. I'd also like to uh, uh, thank Senator Hutchinson, who, when I was in Harrisburg, he asked me, Russ, what can I do to help? I said, get me 228 closed. Gary Pinto, our code enforcement officer, our jack of all trades. Uh, we asked Gary to sit on the board at Adams Area Fire District a few years back. He never, ever wavered. He's at every meeting. Um, there are th some things I think you guys are pounding in his head not to report back to us. But uh, I can tell you, two weeks ago, when John's group was here, you could have went upstairs, and there was Gary with the sweeper in his hands. That's the kind of employee he is. But he's going to be known for one really important thing in this project. We will be dedicating the new digital sign that will be hanging right out front in one month, thanks to Gary. So Gary said, how are we going to hang that? How are we going to allow this sign, Russ? We don't allow it anywhere else in the township. And I said, well, Gary, this is our volunteer fire company. He said, but I'm going to get a lot of complaints. And I said, Who's going to get those complaints? And he said, I am. I said, OK, we're still going through with the sign. Thank you, Gary, for everything you've done. Much appreciated. <laughs> Janet, Janet Lubert, who is here on behalf of today of her father, who was a firefighter for the longest time, um, another unbelievable dedicated employee. Uh, I think you can all understand how many invoices and checks have been written over the last 12 months. Anytime anything was needed or anything was done, Janet was there. Thank you, Janet. All I can say is, thank goodness we hired a Parks and Recs director. This young lady has had the opportunity to probably talk to me four times a day. Uh, we discussed and talked about two and a half months ago about how are we going to kick off this building? What are we going to do? We talked. We changed. We put a committee together. We had another meeting. We listened to what the committee said. Then we changed something. And we went back to the committee. And we just kept going on and on and on. Uh, I'm very proud to say that last week, I think we had about 3,000 people come through this building, 140 dozen of cookies, about 40 cases of pop and water, and about eight thousand slide rides it was the community spirit was unbelievable the uh, the opportunity to share this building with the community because this is this community's building and today's dedication first class as you guys always do we wanted to make sure it was special and I, I want to recognize her because she has been with us now for about five months. And the one thing she said to me last week is she said, you know, I was researching how do you put one of these events together the last two weeks. And she said it takes about a year and a half. Well, I'm here to say, Haley Geyer, thank you. You did it in two and a half months.
As I turn my attention to the men and women of Adams Area Fire District, we're very fortunate in this community to have two 100% volunteer fire companies. I stress that because I say 100% volunteer. We have the Calorie Fire Company and we have the Adams Area Fire Company. I've been very fortunate to work with the leadership, with each and every one of the firefighters. I've been part of many of the things that they have done. I've become not only a working with them on a supervisor fashion, but I became very, very good friends with them. I like to say to the Adams Area Fire District, you are in good hands. I would like to recognize four people right now. Mr. Bill Hayes, please stand. Jim Ellis, Jason Safry, and Mr. Bob Lytle. Please stand, stay standing. Gentlemen, Bob and I were standing outside last night about nine o'clock. We looked at each other, we gave each other a hug, and we turned and looked at the building. And we said, wow. All I can say to you is, I don't know the difference between a red shield, a white shield, or a yellow shield. But what I will say to the four of you is if you asked me to follow you into a fire, I would. It has been my pride and honor to work with each and every one of you. Thank you. I'm going to close out now. That was pretty quick. Ladies and gentlemen of the Adams Area Fire District, known as station number 42, on behalf of the Adams Township residents, the residents of, of Seven Fields, Calorie Borough, Mars, and Valencia. I would like to, at this point in time, officially say to you, welcome home. Thank you. That's a telephone alarm reporting a uh, house fire. 87 Bernard Street, between Thomas, Street and Castor Park, for engine 16, engine 17, quit midi 7, battalion 2, rescue 11, truck 10 is the red car 99. That's a report of a house fire with several calls, reported the possibility of somebody still inside 87 Bernard Street, between Thomas and Castor Park. Now for the deputy and the protective. That old alarm was sounding, and he knew he had to go. All he could think about were his little girls at home. He signed on to this job, yet to help the ones in need. But every time he ran into that fire, he knew he might not leave. He doesn't want any money for the things he trained to do. He wants to help the ones in need. He wants to see the whole job through. He's well aware of the cost that it takes to save a life. But that doesn't matter to the man he is inside. Yeah, we all need to sing that firefighter song. When that man pulled up on scene, all he heard were those kids screaming. He ran right through the front door to save a few young dreams. A few moments later, well, that house it had collapsed. He'd never go back home again To hang out with his kids He didn't want any money For the things he trained to do He helped the ones in need And he saw the whole job through Well aware of the cost That it takes to save Yeah, we all need to sing that fire.
Firefighters gone.